Welcome back to Phillip Island and the first round of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul from the magnificent Phillip Island circuit. We are getting ready to go racing for the third and final Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup race of the weekend. We've seen some fantastic action so far this weekend and we're getting ready to go racing. Levi Russo, Tieran Fleming and Brody Page will start from the front row of the grid. Sam Drain, Ryan Larkin and Harrison Watts on row two. Hudson Thompson, Hunter Corney and Cameron Rendy row, row three. James Weaver, William Hunt and Marcus Hammond uh, row four and they're in the starter's hands, Phil. Getting ready to go racing. The red flag leaves the front of the grid. Blue Crew Oceano Junior Cup. Junior Cup is go. Look at them get a good run off the line there. Second row of the grid saw some very fast starters. Someone's dropping back from the front row of the grid as well. I think that may be Brody Page, Steve, as they make their way down towards turn one for the first time. It is bike number 78. Is it uh, leading down there in towards turn one for Levi, the first time? I think it's Levi Russo who's leading the way there at the moment. So he got off to a good start. Tieran Fleming just behind him. Brody Page is there too. Sam Drain, uh, younger brother of Tom, is uh, right up in that leading group. Now, this is an exciting class to watch if you've never seen these bikes before. They're going to be very close all the way through, dicing on these little uh, R15s uh, in the uh, Blue Crew Oceano Junior Cup. It's an exciting race to watch with these youngsters, isn't it, Phil? Yeah, it looked like Brody Page actually didn't get the best of jumps, but he's now back into uh, the lead group there. Shows you how things change so quickly in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup. So they come down in towards turn four. Look at them spread all the way across the track, Steve, as they make their way down to Honda Corner turn four. A couple of riders going around the outside there as they make their way through turn four for the first time. Sam Drain's got a cracking start. He's up into third place. Ryan Larkin in fourth and Cameron Rendy. He's already tasted victory this weekend and having a sensational ride in race three as well, sitting in fifth place. Absolutely. Nixon Frost is in there too, all the way from New Zealand to join the uh, fray over here. Let's hope that he sees the year out in this uh, Blue Crew Junior Cup class. It'll be good to see him um, competing in all the rounds. And of course, his dad, Sloan Frost, is no stranger to ASBK having raced in the class uh, many moons ago, making a trip across the Tasman. So we make our way to the top of Lukey Heights now and make our way through Alpine Stars Corner and down into Pirelli. So we see these riders come across the top of the hill. It is bike number 40, Hunter Corney, that has taken the running at the front up again. Brody Page back to second. Sam Drain in third. A little bit of a biff and barge there, back through the field as they make their way through turn 11. Of course, their rider coach for uh, 2022, none other than uh, MotoGP race winner and also World Superbike race winner here at Phillip Island, Gary McCoy. Yeah, if anybody knows how to ride around this circuit, it's Gary McCoy. They couldn't have asked for a better coach, these guys. Most of them are probably that young. They don't know who Gary McCoy is, but I'll tell you what, if they look back on YouTube and a few do, look, do a bit of history, they'll find out that he's a, a legend uh, MotoGP rider, that's for sure. Down to complete the first lap we go. It is Hunter Corney that led them across the line. The big question is, can he maintain the lead as they make their way down towards turn one? Look at Drain coming up the inside. Just can't quite get through. But he did a pretty good job to uh, make an attempt on the inside there. And uh, as we look at them now coming out of uh, that corner and through to turn one, it is Hunter Corney back into the lead. He didn't get the best of runs down the straight. He led them onto the straight. We know that's never going to mean that you're leading into turn one. But he's back in front by the time they get to turn two. It's all about jostling for position and trying to find out where that slipstream is. The slipstream in this class is more important than any other class. It's a real strategic um, place to be here. You've got to put yourself and your body right at the right point to, to get the, you know, make the moves. Pretty much the slipstream is everywhere except um, Honda Corner and uh, Turn 10 MG, which is Pirelli Corner this weekend because the rest of the circuit, they are pretty much full throttle the rest of the way around, are they? Oh, they certainly are. Bit of a break there from the leader out the front. That is uh, Hunter Corny. He's um, having a good weekend, isn't he? Certainly is. He's been very fast all weekend, was fast in qualifying and uh, has already uh, been on the podium here this weekend as well. Just having a look back through the field that uh, a couple of other riders that we expect to be near the front, Tieran Fleming has dropped back to uh, eighth position. That's not much of a worry so early in the race though. And you can see the size of the, uh, the group that's sitting just behind those four riders that are battling it out for second, third, fourth and, and fifth place. A little bit of a gap back then now to the other uh, the riders back being led by, I think that's Levi Russo 
and uh, also in that group, uh, Hudson Thompson, the uh, the younger brother of the first ever champion, Carter Thompson, in the uh, Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup, who's gone on to bigger and better things overseas uh, since uh, this gave him his grounding in uh, in motorcycle racing. Yeah, of course, uh, Hunter had a bit of an off um, at uh, Tail and Bend, uh, so it's good to see him back from that as well. So. Um, you know, doing a fantastic job out there, did Hudson. So making our way onto the uh, start-finish straight now, the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start-finish straight. And uh, plenty of new partners in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup for uh, season 2022. They're running on Dunlop tyres this year, Steve. They're still wearing the Recondi leathers, Recondi boots, and, uh, and also Recondi gloves as well. But uh, using Yamaha Yamalube lubricants as well, and uh, of course we've still got that fantastic team from Motorcycling Australia preparing all of the bikes, taking them to each round, making sure that all the kids' bikes are also very even. There's also that levelling program for the weights. The riders that are a little bit lighter have to carry a little bit more fuel, so it evens up the field a bit as well. And, and weight isn't a penalty because there is a fair weight range between some of these riders. No, it is a fantastic way to get into the sport of road racing. Um, great job by Motorcycling Australia, Yamaha, and all of the partners that have managed to get this uh, program together uh, and get these kids out on track and especially uh, racing uh, on TV as well. I mean, fantastic stuff for them. Just having a look at the weights, the heaviest rider in the field is bike number 37, Alexander Cody. He weighs 70 kilos. So uh, that's a uh, fair weight penalty, well, especially when you're trying to race against guys like uh, Hunter Corney, who weighs a massive 39 kilos. Yeah, well, Hunter Corney doing the job at the moment, leading the pack um, out of Ducati corner there. Great job for him. A little bit of a lead there too. You can just see up the inside that looks like Ryan Larkin's made the slipstream past. Cameron Rendy's making his way forward too. Burst on the scene at Tail and Bend. Uh, some good results there with a win yesterday. Yeah, made his debut in the class at the end of last year. Comes out with uh, victory in the first race that he actually has in the, uh, the first full season that he's racing in the class. Of course, he comes from relatively good pedigree, though, Steve. Yeah, he certainly does. His granddad is known other than Malcolm Pittman. So, Mal Pittman has uh, been around the MotoGP paddock for many years. The Australian Superbike paddock, been a team manager, worked for the Yamaha racing team, um, is now working in the Unitech uh, Superbike team as well, so with um, Arthur Cece. So racing, let's say, runs in the blood of this family. Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup, lap three of the six-lap journey. It's their third and final race for the weekend. We are looking at Hunter Corney, who currently leads ahead of Ryan Larkin on board bike number 68, and Sam Drain on bike number seven. Actually, he's that short. That's a long way to the ground on these uh, little machines, even though they're little commuter bikes. And he actually couldn't quite get his foot down. It got caught on his foot peg for race number two. The bike fell over, oh. picked it up, and then had a fantastic ride in race number two. So it's, uh, it's all about making sure that you're not mentally phased at all. Even that couldn't phase him on the grid. Absolutely. Nothing like getting the adrenaline pumping early on in the race, is there? So uh, I'm sure that's what's happened with him. But it's... Uh, Hunter Corney, he's doing a great job out the front with Ryan Larkin up there, Sam Drain as well. Hunter Corney seems to be near the front of this more than not, you know what I mean? Like, so he's, uh, although getting slipstreamed and past it sometimes, he's actually doing a pretty good job. Just having a look at the uh, the fastest lap time in this race, it's a 2 minute 10.438 from Harrison Watts on board bike number 14. Also the highest top speed on the last lap of 152 kilometres an hour. And he's actually one of the heavier guys in this field at 65.2 kilos as well. So uh, doing a good job is uh, Harrison Watts on board bike number 14. We see Brody Page is back into the lead, uh, or back up there in the uh, the lead group now on bike number uh, 74. But our race leader, Sam Drain, younger brother of Tom Drain, who really made a name for himself, uh, not only on the flat tracks of uh, America, but also in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup in the uh, first couple of years. Harrison Watts has made his way up into second position now with Marcus Hammond just behind him. Ryan Larkin's there too. Brody Page has gone down and Hudson Thompson is uh, in his worst position of the race, back in seventh or eighth at the moment. But look how close they are, Phil. You literally, what we say every time this is on, it's all about track positioning and trying to figure out where you need to be on that last lap. No point leading at this point on the last lap because you ain't going to win the race. Sam Drain just runs a little wide there. Yeah, ran wide, uh, didn't quite get the apex there, and Harrison Watts uh, made him pay very, very dearly for that as Watts now has a quick look over his shoulder as he comes through turn 11 and turn 12 area of the uh, of the circuit. That is uh, Yamaha revs your heart corner he's going through now. He'll be revving that little Yamaha out onto the straight to try and get maximum drive through turn 12. There's plenty of people keen to take advantage of the slipstream. 
right out on the side. Bike number 34, Tieran Fleming, trying to get a bit of a run there as well. And here comes bike number 13, Marcus Hamod. He's been on the podium so far this weekend as well, Steve. Yeah, he certainly has. And you can just see the speed difference when they do get that slingshot between two or three bikes. There's a massive speed difference. Got a red flag that's just come out, though, Phil. Red flag, that means this race will be stopped. Unsure as to the reason for that at the moment, but uh, we'll have a bit of a look to try and figure it out. We've got a rider that's come off, unfortunately. Yeah, we're on the uh, we were actually on the fifth lap of this uh, of this race. We had completed four laps, so we'll have to wait for the officials to uh, decide what uh, what happens with the remainder of that race. But uh, I think when the red flag came out, Marcus Hamod might have been leading on board bike number uh, 13 with Ryan Larkin in second, and Cameron Rendy had made his way up into a third place. Yeah, so it looks like that race is going to be declared after the crash at Yamaha Corner. So all the riders will head back into the pit uh, and they'll move back and try and figure out who's won that race. But uh, not sure who that rider is, so who's gone down. Uh, but uh, one thing we do know is that Race Safe will be right on the on the scene to get there straight away to, to attend to them. <coughs> Uh, race safe, uh, as we said, the premier medical crew anywhere in the uh, in the world, Steve. So uh, the best attention to that uh, that fallen rider for sure, as uh, the field make their way back into the uh, into the pits. We've mentioned uh, so far this weekend, though, the huge crowd that's turned up here at Phillip Island to witness this uh, this event. I haven't seen a crowd at Phillip Island for an ASBK standalone round like we have seen this weekend. You'd have to be mad to ride your bike here. Do you know anyone that rode their bike here all the way from Sydney, Phil? Yes, me. <laughs> and I go. also know that there were um, seven other lunatics that rode with me as well. But we started out in absolutely pouring rain, Steve Martin. But fantastic weather here all weekend at Phillip well, Island. It never rains in Melbourne, mate. That's all I can say. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the crowd here at Phillip Island is, um, I mean, it, this is probably one of the biggest crowds that we've seen here for the ASBK. It's definitely growing in stature as a sport um, over the last few years. Right, so Blue Crew Oceano Junior Cup Race 3 has been declared and Marcus Hamod will take the win from Ryan Larkin and Cameron Rendy. Successful weekend for the young South Australian taking out third position. Harrison Watts in fourth, Sam Drain in fifth, Hudson Thompson in sixth, Tieran Fleming in seventh, Brodie Page in eighth, William Hunt in ninth and Levi Russo rounds out the top ten. Hunter Corney, who led a lot of that race early on, ended up down in 11th. Didn't work out for him, but good to see Abby Cameron. Good result for her. Alexander Cody, James Weaver in 14th place as well. But it's plenty more action coming here from Phillip Island. Off to a short break. We'll be back with more action from this first round of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Super Bike Championships presented by Motul. So getting ready now to go racing for Dunlop Super Sport 300. Front row of the grid is uh, Glenn Nelson. Just about in the starter's hands. Warm-up lap is uh, underway. You can see the green flag there. Letting the riders know that they have one 4.45 kilometre warm-up lap to uh, start. As this uh, very healthy field makes its way down towards uh, turn one. Racing so far this weekend for the Dunlop Supersport 300 has been absolutely sensational. Henry Snell has taken two wins from two starts. Uh, so pretty much a uh, perfect weekend for him. The only flaw in that ointment was the fact that uh, he didn't qualify on pole position. That honour, of course, went to uh, Glenn Nelson on board bike number 39. But Henry is on the front row of the grid. So uh, a good season start for uh, Henry Snell. Good to see so many young riders that have come up through the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup also making their way into the Dunlop Supersport 300 field. As you said, Glenn Nelson, James Jacobs and Henry Snell on the front row of the grid. Cameron Dunker, Liam Waters, Varus Fleming on the second row of the grid. Brody Gore with Joe Marinello, his final hit out before he heads over to the Moto America Championships uh, in position number eight. And Joe Russo joins him on row three. Row four is Teo Axu, who has been a front runner all weekend. Mitch Simpson and Jonathan Nalus in 12th position, row four. Sam Pizzetta, Laura Brown, the uh, the vet from Sydney in position number 14. And Brandon Demery having his final hit out in the Super Sport 300 category this weekend, rounds out row five with Hayden Nelson, Peter Nerlich and Clay Clegg rounding out row six. We've got Lincoln Knight, 
Jamie Port unfortunately broke his collarbone yesterday, won't be competing today. And Jack Favell on row seven. And Jake Senior, Cooper Roundtree, and uh, Jordan Simpson on row eight, with uh, two other riders back there on row nine as well. Well, we're getting ready to go racing for Dunlop Supersport 300, their final outing for the weekend. Henry Snell's two from two. Can he make it a trifecta, Steve? Well, the way he's riding, I reckon he might be able to, you know, like he seems to be thinking about his uh, positioning on the track and, you know, no matter what you say, we say it a million times, but that's what this uh, track's all about. There's Joe Marinello, his last ride here in Australia too, heading over to race in America for the rest of the year. So we wish him the best of luck. Good to see him here. Having a bit of a wave to the crowd on the inside too. Was that a minion helmet that he had on there too? Well, it could well be, but uh, it's a very distinctive uh, painted machine, the number 88 machine that he rides there. He has got the uh, the minion helmet on, his final uh, hit out in, uh, here in Australia. Because one of the things he will miss the most about when he goes over to the uh, Moto America Championship is... Uh, Working his uncle, at AMX? No, his, uh, his uncle um, Anthony's uh, famous salami. Could well be, could well be. The salami king is the title he goes by. Right, ready to go racing, Steve. As we mentioned, no start line, Sam, on the front row of the grid here this weekend. So get well soon, Sammy, and hopefully we'll see you back soon. But we're ready to go racing. Red flag leaves the front of the grid. In the starter's hands, Dunlop Supersport 300. Supersport 300 is go. Good start there from the outside of the front row of the grid from Henry Snell. He's already got the jump past James Jacobs. Looks like Cameron Dunker also got a good start from row two on board bike number three. Look at the yellow mudguard sliding its way down the inside. But here comes Varus Fleming as well on board bike number 35, the Moto Go machine. He was the man of creative lines in race number one, but he has a pretty conservative line through turn one for the first time. But it is Snell, Nelson and Dunker that lead us through turn one, turn two for the first time. Yeah, Liam Waters just in behind him. Varus Fleming's up there. Brody Gorwith as well. Jay Marinello got a good start there in the top ten. One of the biggest guys on these bikes, isn't he? So, uh, you know, he does... Uh, need to try a little bit hard around the corners because he doesn't have that speed down the straight. But nevertheless, uh, it is Glenn Nelson who takes the lead into the Honda corner. Yeah, look at Gore with uh, up the inside as well, making a uh, big lunge on the brakes as they came down turn four. A couple of riders running wide there. Looks like there may have been a bit of biff and barge back in the field. Hopefully everyone made it through that section of the circuit OK. I'll tell you, one guy that who's uh, performed well this weekend, who we hope can get up there, he's been up there and on the podium a couple of times, Teo Aksu. He's uh, down in ninth at the moment, work to do. But there's a group of five at the front, little gap back to the two behind. You have a look at the top, say, 12 or 13 riders, Steve, and if any of those riders were actually up there on the podium at the end of the race, you wouldn't be surprised. Hence why it's so hard to actually get onto the podium in this class because there are so many quality riders and there's so little between the motorcycles. Oh, absolutely, there is. And, um, you know, slipstreaming makes a big effect at this circuit. These guys are young, they're brave. Um, they really know how to ride these motorcycles. So, you know, the positions are changing every corner, not only just every lap. Uh, they really dig deep um, to ride these little 300s, you know. There are some setup things that you can do to the bikes. They do run different suspension to standard, uh, different exhaust pipe to make them sound better, but they're all essentially uh, fairly stock machines to keep the cost down. Well, you can see their uh, posi position number six now. I think it's Cameron Dunker, the young man that was identified by Jamie Stofer, Heath Griffin and uh, Damien Cutland as a star of the future. Got a lot of support from them last year, and even though he's not part of their official GTR Motorstars team, which is in Superbike this year. Still getting a lot of port support from those three guys. Been training with Max Stofer in the off-season as well. And uh, we look now to see James Jacobs take up the running. He's getting a fair bit of support from a Kawasaki Connection as well. Matt Walters and uh, yeah, in the same garage as him this weekend, giving them a bit of a hand and uh, probably some guidance as well with Matt's uh, considerable experience. Look at this. He just got absolutely swamped down into turn four. He's gone from the lead back to fourth place in the blink of an eye. That's just the way this class is, Phil. Oh, we've got a faller there. That's uh, not sure the number of that uh, guy. He's OK. Just pushed in too hard, lost the front. You can see he's not happy with that, but uh, perfectly OK. Walk not, of shame back to the Not the way bike. he wanted to end the weekend in the uh, third and final race for Dunlop Supersport. Back to the front, it is Snell, Nelson, Jacobs, and uh, is that uh, Liam Waters now on board bike number eight, 181 that's made his way up into the, uh, the top four. 
just ahead of uh, Cameron Dunker and Teo Axu's clawing his way forward, Steve. He's up to sixth position. There he is. He's got the bike painted black and he's been like a stealth bomber this weekend, just sneaking in underneath the radar whenever possible. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just have another look here at uh, this uh, crash. And yeah, we saw that uh, the front end. Uh, that was uh, uh, Jake, Jake Senior. Senior who, I think that's his second crash for the weekend, yeah. isn't it? You can just see there, just lost the front on the way in. Um, just trying to ask a little bit too much of that uh, front tyre. Unfortunately, he won't be wanting to watch that AMX Superstores replay too many more times. No. So back to the front it is. Jacobs taking the lead on the Kawasaki as we make our way down the front straight. Waters up into second place. Here comes Gorwick as well on board bike number 25, trying to slide up into third. But... Uh, I think that was Teo Aksu, was it, that said, no, you don't. He's taken the wide line there. See, his wide entry line, and then he cuts it back towards the apex and gets a good drive out towards turn three. We saw in your track preview before, Steve Martin, it is one of the most important corners on this circuit. Yeah, well, um, Teo, I, I have to say that he definitely takes more, like, Moto 3 lines and, uh, you know, like, 125 lines, more so than, you know, your, your superbike type line where you get it in point and turn it he really does drift from out wide and drift in and use all the circuit and keep that mid corner speed up and that's something that we've noticed about him throughout the weekend he always has that mid corner speed advantage so waters back into the lead now on board bike number 181 so doing a, a good job here. Yesterday afternoon, he was fifth, uh, sorry, sixth in uh, in the first race of the weekend. He's just been improving every race he's gone out. But as we see in Dunlop Supersport 300, you only get to hold the lead for a very short amount of time because now the lead is back with uh, James Jacobs on board bike number 16. Where has uh, Teo Aksu gone? Because we saw him in the lead of, not, there he is, on the inside or the outside now of uh, He's always on the, the bottom of the hill. He's always on the outside. That's his entry line. He's always uh, taking that wide line. But uh, Liam Waters there just in front uh, of him with um, James Jacobs still leading. Be interesting to see how James Jacobs ends up turn, going into uh, the bottom corner there, the uh, Motum corner. Uh, at the end of this straight. And look who is in a seventh position and making his way forward into this lead group. Joe Marinello, look at him now, making a run up the inside or down the inside. He's gone to the lead. This is the first time I think Joe Marinello has ever led a Super Sport 300 race. He is on fire as he comes down towards turn one. It was almost like he was on a 600 there. The use of the slipstream just flinged him forward. Yeah, I don't or think flung he... flung him forward. I don't think he, he, he backed off for that, did he? So, uh, great. This would be great for the confidence of Joe Marinello. Let's see how long he lasts out there. He's quite uh, loose. Tall, well, he's tall, <laughs> loose and he's a tall character, so he's a really good um, you know, if you're going to slipstream anyone, he's the man to get behind. Well, you can see how much he's got to try and crouch up behind the, uh, the very small screen on that Ninja 400 to try and get any aerodynamic efficiency as Cameron Dunker, one of the smallest and lightest riders in the field, comes through into second, and at the same time it was Varus Fleming on board bike number 35 that sailed on through up the inside to take up the running at the lead and Davaris Fleming has been the man of creative lines, especially across the top of Lukey Heights. Uh, he seems to go out very, very wide to get the inside running down into uh, the Pirelli corner turn 10. Watch to see if he does the same thing now when he's leading this race through Suzuki corner. Was the area of the track that caught Wayne Maxwell out. We saw the replay of the incident. It was a big crash for uh, Wayne Maxwell. As we said, that bike won't be coming out later on this afternoon. Now, look at Varus Fleming. Look how wide he goes out there. Then he comes down the inside. He's got the inside running into a Pirelli corner. That's... And he maintained the corner speed on the way out. That's where Glenn Nelson catches him every time. That is, uh, you know, your classic. The line he takes there, it's a good line for the last lap. It's a protective line. No one's going to nip up the inside of you there. It's almost an overtaking line. Not necessarily the fastest um, out of there and into turn 11, but... Uh, you know, it's it's working for him. Joe Marinello, fastest lap of the race, a 148.074. That will be something you can take overseas. He's back into the lead, Steve Martin. Bike number 88, back in the lead. The Minion helmet leads them all the way down in towards turn one. Varus Fleming in second place. Who's that that's moved up into... Uh, into fourth place. Is it? Uh, is that JJ, Jonathan Narlos on board bike number 20? Yeah, it is Jonathan Narlos. Good to see him up there. It's uh, not often that we talk about him at the front of the race, is uh, it? He so? was another rider that... Oh! Uh, he, he only actually started in the championship at Winton last year. Yeah. That's how uh, fresh uh, JJ is to, uh, to racing. 
And considering that we haven't had, well, what, two rounds since then, he doesn't have a lot of experience under his belt, but he's shown some raw speed this weekend and sideways into turn four yesterday. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see him up there. And uh, it's all mixed up now, isn't it? Any one of these guys could end up winning this. I mean, Glenn Nelson, who's been up near the front the whole way through, is literally uh, just doing an, you know, he's back in the pack now. Uh, Mitchell Simpson's in there too. Good to see. Brandon, Brandon Demery's making his way up in what should be his last race. Well, Brandon Demery is always there at the end of the race, isn't he? He's never there at the start, middle of the race. He's working his way forward. But when it comes to the end of the race, number 11 is always there or thereabouts. He's a former champion in the 300 classes and uh, doing a great job so far in what we well, he thinks will be his last performance. He said that he's definitely not coming back, but we'll wait and see what happens at round two as Joe Marinello back into the lead ahead of Varus Fleming. Can Joe Marinello score his first win in the Dunlop Supersport 300 class in his last race before he heads overseas? Australian's junior supermoto champion is doing a pretty good job out there too. Um, Hayden Nelson is uh, 13th at the moment. So he's also uh, won his class at the Hattar. So he's a pretty talented young kid uh, mixing it up with these boys at the moment out there. So uh, Hayden Nelson, a name to keep an eye on in the future. So we're on lap five now of the uh, seven lap journey. There's still Joe Marinello that leads. Now, one thing we know about Joe Marinello, as the laps go by, he's going to get sketchier and sketchier, isn't he? He's going to give it everything he's got. He will, he'll want to leave Australia on a high and win this. Oh, oh. Nalos has crashed into the side of Nelson, Nelson and they're both gone. Oh, no. He was just running a little bit wide and they got tangled up. Nelson, not real happy about the whole affair as they... Uh, race could be ending in the gravel trap for those guys. Well, I'd say that's a big yes. Unfortunately, it looks like that's the end, and uh, Nelson's got the Jack Miller helmet on. He won't be, uh, won't be continuing on in this race. Is he going to try and get it going again? I think it's all over. I think there might be a lever that's broken or something there. Yeah. I think JJ's apologising there, so look, sorry about that, but back to the uh, the race lead, and we should have Joe Marinello still in the lead. I'll tell you, one thing that's probably changed between Joe Marinello uh, version 2022 and Joe Marinello version 2019-2020 uh, is the level of fitness that he's carrying now. Oh, he's been absolutely. doing an incredible amount of cycling and training to prepare himself for this uh, assault on the Moto America Championships and he's probably the fittest that he's ever been. So yeah. uh, maybe that might mean that he's uh, a little bit less sketchy in the last couple of laps. Well, let's hope so. Uh, James Jacob just slides up the inside there. Nice move by him. One of the few Kawasaki's in the field. Here we go. We just saw there, you can see that was, um, Nalos was just running a fraction wide and tagged into the uh, the back of Glenn Nelson's machine. Yep, on the AMX replay there. Uh, always good to be able to see the theatrics of what happens after the crash as well, isn't it? So, you know, the man that's uh, probably just sliding in underneath the radar, keeping his power dry, uh, powder dry, not uh, making his presence felt too much at the moment, is bike number 12, Henry Snell. Well, you're right. He's up there again, isn't he? He's already won two. Already won two, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, will he do it again? And there he is, just uh, sliding his way forward. Just uh, letting the others do all the donkey work at the front while he just sits there. As uh, race direction advises that the uh, incident at turn number two is under investigation. Well, that's, uh, it ain't going to change the outcome for either of them in this race, that's for sure. They can work that out tonight. Joe Marinello around the outside. So we've got two Kawasaki's leading, something we don't see a lot of the time in the Dunlop Supersport 300 category. That will only be for a moment, though, because the horde of Yamaha R3's come down the inside. Oh, I think that was that Teo Aksu put a big move on there. He was lucky not to run into the side of Joe Marinello. No, actually, it was Henry Snell. So Snell went from about fifth position up into third place. We're on the final lap. This is the charge to the line that you spoke about earlier on, Steve Martin, that started at turn four, as you said. And the man that is making a big charge now is Henry Snell on board bike number 12. Keep an eye on him as he comes up towards the top of the hill through Suzuki and around Alpine Stars. It is Jacobs and Marinello that lead. But keep your eye on the... Uh, well, the closing, Henry Snell, and also Varus Fleming. Keep your eye on Henry Snell. He's in the perfect position. Joe Marinello's got that bigger physique. Uh, although he's fit, uh, it's just a really good um, bike to slipstream. He should get uh, a little bit more speed, but it uh, looks like um, Snell's trying to go around the outside. If he can get that slipstream, Marinello's right on the back of uh, Jacobs now. And Henry Snell has got uh, Teo Aksu in his slipstream as well as they set sail for the line. It is Jacobs that comes out onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance straight first, but it could be Varus Fleming, the 
Panthers, a lot of them, Steve, as they come to the line. Varus Fleming on 35 will take the win. He just got there, I think, ahead of James Jacobs and Joe Marinello. That could be Joe Marinello's first podium, I'd say, in the uh, Dunlop Supersport category as the rest of the field makes their way through now. Henry Snell, we thought he was perfectly positioned, but James Jacobs and Joe Marinello just managed to hang on, but Varus Fleming was the one that used the slipstream to absolute perfection to take the win by 0 0.028 of a second. That's not much. That is definitely not much, is it? I think that means we would have a combined margin across the uh, the three races of about 0.15 of a second between uh, the three Dunlop Supersport 300 classes. Varus Fleming, congratulations. A great win there ahead of James Jacobs and Joe Marinello. Henry Snell in fourth, Brody Gore within fifth, Tayu Aksu in sixth, Hayden Nelson, a great result from him once again in seventh position, Cameron Dunker in eighth, Brandon Demery in ninth, and Laura Brown rounds out the top 10. Lincoln Knight in 11th on the 222 machine. He was up there too. Jai Russo, good result. Liam Waters on the 181 machine. We saw him up there too. Clay Clegg. Mitch Simpson from South Australia there, Sam Pizzetta, Peter Nerlich on the 97 machine, and Jordan Simpson in 18. Henry Snell leads here, or leaves here, Steve Martin, with the championship lead by 17 points over Tayu Aksu and James Jacobs in third place in the championship. Yeah, good to see with Dun uh, Cameron Dunker as well, right up there, 46 points for him, and uh, Brody Goldworth, a good one. Varus Fleming, of course, who won this race, is uh, back uh, a little bit. Didn't have such a good weekend up, but I'll tell you what, he'll be smiling tonight. That's it. We've just been advised by Race Direction that the finish is also under video review. So uh, oh, That's always good, isn't it? Well, it was that close at the finish. And as we saw, the, the finishing margin, according to the CompuTime timing monitor, was so close that they're uh, going back and having a look at the video to make sure that that was actually the, the result. But uh, our top three on the provisional results are in Park for May with KP. Let's go down to the AMX Superstores podium. Exactly, and in P3 it's Joe Marinello. Joe, you have been so fit for this last one. Have you? Are you just feeling so good? Are you feeling on the ball because you have gotten a P3? Well done. Honestly, I'm over the moon. Like, it's a serious grind in this class every day. Get up, cycle, you know, put in, put in, put in. And, you know, like, I've been wanting it for ages. But then, yeah, finally got it. Off to America now. And, um, yeah, can't wait. Good to leave on a good terms. And I'd like to dedicate this um, podium to Benny Baker. Um, he's in hospital at the moment. He had a gnarly crash on Friday. Made him train all the time on Zwift. So, yeah, mate, this one's for you, brother. Oh, really nice stuff, Joe. Well done and good luck in America. And in P2, once again, James Jacobs. Congratulations. Well done. You're representing on the Kawasaki, but you look a little more relaxed this time. Yeah, no, it was such a good race. Me and Joe out here with P2 and 3 on the Kawasaki. He's finally getting back to the front. Yeah, no, it was a good race. Yeah, excellent. Well, you're feeling good and it's a great way to start the year. Yeah, had a rocky first start, but get in second back to back, it feels good. Yeah, good on you. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations, James. And in P1, Varys Fleming. Varys, you worked really hard. I can hear your family celebrating in the background. They are so happy for you. Yeah, I worked a lot on that race. At the start of the race, I thought I had lost it because I had a very miss messy half a race. But then the second half, I made up for it and I got the slipstream behind the boys and just got in the lead. Just like the last last three race, the same thing happened. Totally, and you and you time that so perfectly. You must be stoked. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> You're just happy. That's okay. Do not worry. Congratulations, Varys. Well done, boys. Well, here we go with the AMX Superstores replay of this finish. Um, no reason why it's under. Uh, no surprise why it's under review. So look at this as they come to the line. You can see Varus Fleming just pulls ahead, but the angle that it looks on, it looks like it could be very close for uh, second, third, fourth, all the way back to about fifth or sixth position. Or well, maybe tenth. Then. Yeah, that's it. Well, looking at the results, there was half a second between first and tenth, but there was 0.137 of a second between first and seventh. Short break here from Phillip Island. Continuing action from the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul. Cup is out on the grid, ready to go. Red flag has left the grid. Warm-up lap has started. So 4.45 kilometres to warm those tyres up and get ready for what is sure to be seven hectic laps 
Fraxi, welcome back to the commentary box. Uh, if the weekend so far is anything to go by, this is going to be an extremely close race. And uh, even coming out of turn 12, we're not going to know who the winner is. I'm not going to know the winner is until they cross the line. As in the previous five races in this 300cc category with the Supersport 300 and the R3 Cup. And uh, be interesting to see how uh, Glenn Nelson has uh, managed to bounce back literally after that uh, coming together with uh, Jonathan Narvos in that uh, very, very dramatic uh, Supersport 300 race a couple of hours ago. Well, they, they rehearsed that for you lap before and then they actually pulled it off the, the lap later. <laughs> I don't know if Glenn would agree with you, but a very good sign of sportsmanship between the two. And JJ went up and went, oh, sorry, mate, it was a bit of my fault. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 OK. So Glenn Nelson's back, and he will start from pole position with uh, Henry Snell, who's been exceptional this weekend, starting out of position number two, and Varus Fleming, who's also been very fast out of position number three. Tayu Aksu has been on fire all weekend. Brody Gorwich and also Cameron Dunker start out of row two. And row three, we've got um, Brandon Demery in his once a year wildcard ride before he heads to England. Laura Brown, Jim Russo, Jay Russo, then Liam Waters, Hayden Nelson, and uh, Clay Clegg rounding out row number four. Then we've got Sam Pazetta, Jamie Porter, DNS, and uh, we'll see if John JJ Nowler starts from 15th position on the grid, but I expect him to be out there. Row six will be Cooper Roundtree, Mitch Simpson, and Lincoln Knight and uh, a massive field of Supersport uh, 300 and also Yamaha Finance R3 Cup competitors here this weekend. So many junior riders uh, making their way up from the junior ranks as well too, Braxy. It's great to see and then uh, populating this uh, 300 Supersport field uh, along with the R3 Cup as well. That's great to see. that uh, the Well, the juniors have been strong for a few years and it's just got stronger with the introduction of the OJC back in 2019. And just a side note, the start of this weekend is uh, someone you might know from racing, Stacey Van Wettering, has been up there on the, t on the uh, overpass there at uh, Phillip Island, uh, turning the lights on and off. But, yeah, this will be a cracker. The wind out there now... Um, it seems to have dropped off a little bit, but during the start of that Superbike race, it was just belting down um, uh, the pit straight here, and uh, the time, the speeds were down some 10, 15 kilometres an hour on the Superbike boys from uh, Matty Walters doing 310 in that opening lead this morning. Lucky to get uh, 300 k's out of it this afternoon. Yeah, I think he, he got 303 in a slipstream one lap, and that was about the fastest anyone did uh, in, in the whole race. So uh... no, He got 310. It's no, no, I'm talking about in, in that race. Oh, like in that race, yeah. The yeah. earlier race was the yeah. 310, I think, wasn't yeah. it? So, uh, Ryder's And you know, he's looking the... after Jamie Jacobs as well. He's giving him a bit of coaching as well. He was in that... Uh... He's in the back of the, uh, the Kawasaki Connection pit box. Yep. But here we go in the starter's hands. So, red flag about to leave the front of the grid. Points towards the red lights. We're ready to go racing. Yamaha Finance R3 Cup final race for the weekend. R3 Cup is go. Good start from uh, Snell in Pacific position number two as they make their way down towards turn one for the first time. Cameron Dunker has been lightning off the start. Has he been able to do it again? Look for bike number three. Looks like he's getting swamped, actually, as they come down towards turn one. Jay Russo's got a pretty good start on bike number 32 as well. Through turn one for the first time. It looks like everyone's made it through there safely. And we're at turn two, and Henry Snell's in the lead. Yeah, I don't know how long that'll last. Probably till about turn four Honda Corner. But uh, interesting, Glenn Nelson, when he takes off from the line, he actually stood on the pads as if he was stretching his leathers, which is a very unusual movement for someone with the intensity, well, when you're at the intensity of a start line. So through Yamaha, revs your heart corner and down into a turn four. We can call it Honda Corner this weekend. We make jokes about it all the time, but it hasn't been officially Honda Corner here at Phillip Island for many, many years. Yeah, as the 300 years or something, yeah. <laughs> Phillip Island people tell us every time, oh, we've got a big crash, big crash at Turn 4, a couple of riders down, a couple having to take evasive oh, action. Oh, Laura Brown. Looks like the triple two machine, Lincoln Knight involved in that, and also uh, Laura Brown. Didn't see exactly what happened there. We'll have a look at the AMX uh, Superstores replay. And it looks like uh, oh, riders had to stand up in front. Laura's had nowhere to go, crashed into uh, oh. the rider in front. And then uh, Lincoln Knight has had nowhere to go and crashed into uh, Laura. Gee, Laura gets in some um, real situations. She had Wakefield Park a couple of years ago where she ended up breaking a leg. At least she's been able to walk away from that one OK. The world's fastest vet, or one of the world's fastest vets, that's for sure. So that uh, well incident at Turn 4 is under investigation. I think they'll only have to look at the video once to see actually what happened. Racing incident. 
That's it. Henry Snell leads from Varus Fleming. Varus Fleming's been, uh, I think this is his most successful weekend ever in uh, racing terms, wouldn't it be, Braxy? Two wins, I think, yep. so far. That is. He's broken through because, he, well, he's got to keep in front of his brother, uh, Tieran, because Tieran's starting to really knock some doors down as well as they come storming down this... Um, my, my bike insurance front straight for the second time and look at them five six abreast as they come down the straight and they all seem to funnel in and manage to get there through so henry snell actually led that whole way uh, down the straight from teo axu varus fleming in third position glenn nelson in fourth liam waters in fifth and uh varus actually mean in english means uh carry on the fa family name with pride well, he's certainly been doing that this yeah. weekend. And Tieran. What does Tieran mean? Get into his slipstream someone and do very the same. Someone very special. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. But, yeah, they are. And um, Varus is heading off to Europe on uh, Tuesday, I think he is, to take part in the uh, European Cup. So another one of the uh, vast array of Australians that are going to all, well, you can't say corners of the globe, parts of the globe to compete in 2022 in various championships from America to England to Europe. And what we've seen so far is that most of them have had a pretty good weekend. You think of Senna Agis, you think of Joe Marinello, uh, some of the results that they've pulled out, and then they head off overseas with a massive amount of confidence. Great to see. Back at the front, it is Liam Waters on board bike number 181. He's had a pretty good weekend as well at the front uh, quite regularly in the Supersport 300 and Yamaha Finance R3 Cup races as uh, Varus Fleming uses that uh, unique line across the top of Alpine Stars and down into a Pirelli corner. Steve Martin said it's the perfect line for the last lap of a race. And he thinks every last lap of the, he just wants to rehearse every last lap of the race. <laughs> so it is Nelson that leads coming round through turn 12 to come out onto the start finish straight, complete this second lap. So five laps to go as they come around now as he gets that very aggressive uh, positioning right on the uh, on the bike. I think it would upset such a little bike with a move like that. Yeah, he's getting rather tall. He's taller than me now, actually, Glenn. And he's, all these guys, you wonder why they don't, you don't recognise them because six months ago they were 300 mil shorter than what they are today. Well, even some of the OJC guys that raced last year when they've turned up this year, it's just like they seem to have grown a foot in the off-season. They must have planted them in some manure and put plenty of water on them, Braxy, as they... Uh, turned up here, they would have needed a new set of uh, Recondi leathers. <laughs> they will, they've had to a couple of times uh, talking to a few of them. Swapping leathers between friends. So it's Henry Snell leading the way from Brody Gawit, uh, Taya Aksu. Great to see him come uh, come along. He's uh, started in my juniors and he was a, you, he was one that's grown. He's nearly six foot tall when I first met him he was about 150 millimetres tall. He's certainly starting to fill out a little bit too. Uh, you know, he's certainly no bean pole. That's, uh, you know, he will probably be fitting on a super bike or a super sport bike very soon, I'd say. Uh, Teo Aksu as they make their way out of uh, Siberia, Ducati Corner this weekend and up towards the, uh, the top of the hill. This is where these bikes you like to use the uh, slipstream as they come through Suzuki. You can see them there and uh, the rider there sitting in fourth place, Liam Water, starting to uh, use a bit of slipstream advantage to try and go around the outside of Brody Goyth as they come across the top of the hill at Alpine Stars and down into Pirelli. There goes uh, Varus Fleming with that wide line. Actually, that wasn't anywhere near as wide as normal. No, and it was Brody Gawith was uh, another tight line through there as well. But um, on their third lap, they've got four laps to go at the end of this lap. It's still Henry Snell. He will be going for three wins in this category or not. He's um, doing pretty well lately. And um, it's amazing once, once they, like Glenn Nelson, after he got those results at the bend, his level of confidence and level of performance have lifted. And who's coming up through the inside? That's Taya Axel on bike number 91. I'd say he was inside the white line up against the pit wall there. And uh, Brandon, you're with, on, uh, sorry, Liam Waters again coming up through there to, well, will he lead momentarily? No, Henry's uh, still there in front with uh, a good battle that is uh, top seven a split by just half a second. I tell you, uh, sorry, Varus is Fleming's corner entry speed into turn two there on that wide line was unbelievable. I think he was trying to get the bike actually slowed down without losing too much momentum. Look, he's carried the momentum out of turn two. He's gone around the outside of a couple of them as they make their way through Rev Jahart corner and down into Honda corner turn four. Down the inside, Brody Gawith, how late was that on the brakes? He's actually lost a couple of positions there because uh, he was so late on the front. The front end was going up and down like a pogo stick. Just couldn't... Uh, couldn't break that late and get the bike stopped and turned at the same time. And probably a bit quick for his brain to react, going, holy hell, what's going on here? 
But yeah, Henry Snell, he's actually been pretty consistent since he's uh, leading this race so far. Yep, Jordan Simpson uh, dropping down through the other uh, field. Not sure what's happened there to uh, bike number 23. Also, too, the fastest man in this uh, race so far, Jay Russo, on the last lap was a, a 150.132. Previously before that, it was Mitch Simpson set the fastest lap of the race on the first flying lap, lap two. And Brandon Demery there in ninth position. Sam Bazzetta, he's been impressive. The young South Australian that's in the pit with Arthur CCs this year. But uh, Henry Snell, he's, uh, he looks like he's running this race to perfection, but I'm sure he's going to get swamped again as they come down onto uh, My Bike Motorcycle Insurance straight this time. Been a pretty good weekend too for uh, Hayden Nelson, the uh, former Australian uh, Junior Supermoto champion as well. Braxy, 14 years old, racing in the Supersport 300 category. And uh, he could still be racing in the OJC, but, uh, you know, he's taken the step up to uh, this class and uh, doing a really good job in uh, his first full year of uh, racing the bigger bike. Yeah, well, he had a wretched year last year, as you might remember, at Winton when he had that big crash on the Saturday afternoon, which uh, forced him out uh, for quite some time. But uh, the young boy from Taree, Troy Baylor's country, and I wonder he's won a few dirt track titles after going around the... Uh, the diesel, the oil track at uh, Taree and up there at Kempsey as well, but a really good family as well. Nelson what? down the inside, smoke coming off Glenn Nelson's boot as he tried to get the bike stopped in there at uh, turn four. Hope we get an AMX Superstores replay of that one. It was a very smoky affair there for uh, Nelson. He sits in third place at the moment as they make their way out of. Uh, the bottom end of the circuit there. It's a massive drive up the hill here and probably even more so on a Super Sport 300 than most of the other bikes we've got here this week. And just demonstrating the difference that Henry Snell was leading uh, coming out of Siberia, but now he's been dropped back to fifth position on bike number 12 with Brady Gewith taking the lead on that. Uh, well, that's another bright coloured bike on bike number 25. But uh, Varus Fleming is sitting there in a good spot as well with the uh, fourth position and Patrick Lee is taking all the credit for his first wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's surprising. The other thing is that uh, I thought it was funny when Varus said that the first half of the race he, he thought that he'd let it go, but then the second half of the race everything came to him and he managed to uh, get up there and take the win and then he did the same thing again in another race. So uh, maybe he should you know, not be on fire in the first half of the race all the time <laughs> because when he does... He uh, certainly has a good second half as well. Look at this, they're five abreast as they make their way down the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight with uh, Waters taking the lead momentarily until Cameron Dunker on board bike number three went past. Now, we've got a red flag, Braxy. Yep. Red flag, not some, sure where yeah. that's happened, but it's certainly not in this lead group. An incident somewhere at the top end of the circuit. But uh, just speaking of uh, Cameron Dunker, he's been training incredibly hard in the off-season. Him and Max Stouffer are uh, training together and pushing each other to, uh, to do you know, harder and faster and uh, stronger. So doing a great job, uh, Max, with, uh, with Cameron Dunker and also Cameron Dunker with Max. And they also doing a lot of uh, work, you know, not only in the gym, but also just on their uh, physical fitness well, and training as well. Cam's uh, father was a pretty handy dirt tracker with uh, Jamie way back when, and they've been very good mates for a number of years, and that's where the, the link comes from. And I wouldn't be so geese on track at turn eight, so that's good to see that there was no incident. But with five laps down on their six lap, um, Phil, I'd say that will be race declared this afternoon for the um, Yamaha Finance R3 Cup. Yeah, and unfortunately it looks like uh, a shortened final race for uh, Brandon Demery. There's the geese on the track. Just having a little bit of a uh, peck out They're there. They're rather nonchalant about bikes. It, yeah, been... they don't really seem to care that no. much. They've got the best viewing position in the, uh, the entire Phillip Island complex. And they mate for life, so there's always two of them. You don't see them by themselves very often, and they, they're very sociable birds as well, so they hang around together and go out and have a bit of an afternoon tea. Right, so uh, race three being declared. Looks like Cameron Dunker has taken the win. That would be his first win in the uh, Super Sport 300 category. He has been on the podium before, but that would be his first win well, ahead finished. of Liam Waters on 181, and Henry Snell rounds out the podium. He finished third in the R3 Cup last year, if I remember rightly, too, did uh, Cameron Dunker. Unfortunately, our Yamaha Finance R3 Cup race has been declared after five laps of the seven-lap journey due to the Cape Baron Geese sitting on the side of the circuit. But we've got our top three back into Park for May. There with Kate. Exactly. The geese, Glenn Nelson, uh, P3, well done. Unfortunately, it was a slightly shortened race, but you still got a podium. 
Yeah, after the Supersport 300 race, we didn't know we'd get out, so I'd like to thank all my sponsors, AGV, Recondi, Dynaverks, Foosport Boots, everyone for helping me. And it's just been a decent weekend. Exactly, a decent weekend. You'll be back for more at Queensland Raceway. Oh, for sure. Great. Thanks so much, Glenn. And in P2, Joe Rosso. Joe, welcome to the podium. <laughs> Thank you. It's my first podium. I'm so happy to be here. Can Thanks. you tell me about it? Oh, it was just, I didn't even know I was going to get red flagged, but I'm so happy. Thank you to everyone that made this possible. And the shout out to the geese. Yeah, shout out to the geese. Thanks, Jay. And in P1, this is not your first time here today. Varys Fleming, another great podium for you. Congrats. Yeah, that was, I was a bit confused when the red flags came out and me and Jai were crossing the line. I saw he had one when the red flags did come out. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Mogo, Suspension Pro, KYT Helmets Australia, The Grinning Dingo, and my friends and parents for their support. Excellent stuff, Eris. Congratulations, and you can thank the geese too. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, thank you, KP, and thank you to those geese. Uh, Jay Russo would like to thank you personally for uh, getting onto the track, so he got second place in that race. So championship points are after three races here this weekend. We have uh, Varus Fleming on 70 points, Glenn Nelson on 61, and Henry Snell on 50 is our top three. Then we also have uh, Liam Waters in fourth place on 45, Brandon Demery on 43, and Tayu Aksu on 43. Well, there's plenty more action coming up. Of course, uh, we're just about ready to be done here at Phillip Island, the first round of the championship. What a weekend it's been. Not too long to wait, though, for more action. Round two at Queensland Raceway on the 18th to the 20th of March. Round three, Wakefield Park at Goulburn in New South Wales. The Spectator Circuit, always a massive crowd there, the 22nd to the 24th of April. Then it's up to the Hidden Valley Raceway with the supercars in June. Superbikes only at that round, the 17th to the 19th of June. Back to Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland, another crowd favourite, the 5th to the 7th of August. Simmons Plains in Tasmania, haven't been to Tasmania for many years, looking forward to heading back there on the 20th to the 23rd of October. Back here at Phillip Island in November, and then the Bend Motorsport Park for the grand finale, the 2nd to the 4th of December. Pro MX coming up very soon at the uh, Wanthaggy round, not too far here from Phillip Island, the 27th of March, round two at Mackay in Queensland, the 10th of April, round three at Wodonga in Victoria, the 1st of May, round four at Gilman in South Australia on the 29th of May, then round five at Maitland in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales, the 26th of June, 24th of July, round six at Coffs Harbour, 14th of August, round seven at Queensland Moto Park, and then the Coolum final round, round eight of the championship on the 20th to the 21st of August. The Australian Off-Road Championship also has eight rounds this year. We've got rounds one and two at Jarabba in Queensland, round three and four in Mackay in Queensland, round five and six at Kyogle in New South Wales, round seven and eight at Nowra in New South Wales, round nine and 10 at Kingston in South Australia, and rounds 11 and 12 at Wynyard in Tasmania on the 8th to the 9th of October. For more information, go to the respective calendars AORC for all of the off-road information championship. Back down to you, KP and Steve. Thanks, Phil. Yes, I've got Steve with me. Steve, we've got Queensland Raceway next. Yeah, I can't wait to get there. I mean, that's a track that I've ridden around before and uh, it's a lot of fun. There's, uh, it's a, there's a lot of uh, overtaking in the braking areas there. You, ha you have to be brave. Uh, there's just such a, you know, variance of things. I think we could see other bikes come to the fore there as well. Um, we know that, that we just had a test up there, the BMWs, they worked well up there. So, you know, it might just mix things up a little bit. We haven't been there for a few years. Exactly. It's exciting stuff. I cannot wait. Make sure you're watching and head to asbk.com.au for all the details. Thanks so much, Steve. It's been an excellent weekend. It certainly has been an excellent weekend. Roll on the next one.